el Colegio Mexicano de Ortopedia, en su 75 aniversario, presenta su segundo congreso virtual 2021. El doctor Alan Barber es médico titulado en Baylor College of Medicine en Houston, Texas. Especializado en ortopedia en Triple Army Medical Center en Honolulu, Hawái. Fue jefe de cirugía ortopédica en hospitales militares tanto en Alemania como en Fort Knox, Kentucky. En el William Beaumont Army Medical Center. Fue jefe del servicio de cirugía de pie y profesor de tiempo completo del programa de residencia en cirugía ortopédica. Se especializó en cirugía artroscópica y reconstructiva en el Medical Arts Hospital en Dallas, Texas. Ha publicado numerosos artículos sobre lesiones de rodilla, hombro y medicina deportiva y ha participado en la elaboración de diversos libros sobre temas de su especialidad. Además, es editor de la sección de hombros de la cuarta edición en Operative Arthroscopy y editor del libro Surgical Technicals for the Shoulders and Elbow. Es miembro de las Juntas Asesoras Editoriales de varias revistas profesionales. Actualmente es profesor clínico asistente de cirugía ortopédica en el Centro Médico Sean Western de la Universidad de Texas, Dallas, y es investigador y consultor para diferentes compañías. El doctor Barber hablará sobre por qué mi reparación de una sola fila es la mejor. Thank you for the opportunity to present this work um, to the meeting. I appreciate it. I've been asked to speak about why my single row repair is best. These are my disclosures. Biologic factors are a significant challenge with rotator cuff tears. The tissue changes associated with the cuff tear include the tendon, which retracts and reabsorbs, the muscle, which undergoes fatty infiltration, and the bone, which develops cavities. There are some things we cannot control, increasing age, the MRI tear characteristics, workers' compensation status. But some things we can control are patient selection and timing, the type of anchor and suture we use, whether we use a single row or a double row repair, biologic augmentation, and post-operative activities. We know that the younger patients do well and the older patients do not do as well, especially those over 65. More than one tendon tears do not do as well as single tendon tears and massive tears have difficulty healing. Smoking and nicotine use has an adverse effect on healing as does hypercholesterolemia, diabetes, and steroid use. Anchors are fundamental to a rotator cuff repair. The insertion angle is important to consider. And while we've been taught oftentimes that 45 degrees is the best approach, it's actually a more acute angle than that. That allows us to reach into the better bone in the subcortical area and get a good secure fixation. We do not want to over penetrate, however, and the edge of the anchor should be at the cortex. The force across the, rot across the rotator cuff tendon is about 300 newtons or more. And if our repair is at least that strong, it should do well. All of the current anchors permit us to achieve this level. Suture is now made typically of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. And these polyethylene sutures can be combined with braided polyester as in the fiber wire or combined with polydioxin, uh, which is in the Uh, orthocord, which dissolves, or just be pure braided polyethylene suture, as in all the others. These can have problems, however, because the polyethylene is slippery, much more slippery than the braided polyester. 
And what will happen is that you will have an expectation of, of a breaking strength of 250 to 300 newtons, when in fact your suture knots will give way at a lower level. So it's really important to tie good knots. Some knots perform very well and do not slip, whereas other, other knots, typically the sliding knots, do slip. So it's important to tie internal locking knots, not the Duncan or Fisherman's knot. And the internal locking knots that I like to use are the SMC knot and the Tennessee slider or the SCOE knot. Avoid clamping, abrading, and damaging the suture. And consider using a new suture called Dynacord, which actually takes up the slack to a certain extent after the knot is tied. So why is a single row repair uh, so good? Three simple sutures are stronger than two simple sutures and complex patterns such as mattress and simple sutures with cyclic loading. And they also offer less displacement than other suture patterns. We did a study when we compared these different configurations and found that the triple loaded anchor with simple sutures was stronger by far than many of the other configurations. It also had less gap formation. And we know that the suture tendon interface is the weakest link in the repair. And excessive repair tension has an adverse effect at this point, causing cheese wiring or tearing the suture through the tendon. The pulling force exerted by a string or cable on another object is called tension. And we know from Hooke's law of elasticity that that force is a, comp a combination of the spring constant, in other words, the mobility of the tendon versus the distance displaced or the amount retracted. So the more you retract the, the tendon, the greater the force and the greater the tension. So if you have a retracted tendon without a very large uh, stump of tendon and you try to get it all the way over and on top of the uh, tuberosity footprint, you're gonna compromise healing. There's no way that this small tendon remnant is gonna make it all the way over. That's why a single row is the logical way to go. If the tendon remnant is less than 10 millimeters, the vast majority of these are gonna fail with double row repairs. Whereas if you did a single row repair, the tear rate, re-tear rate is about 6%. So single row is especially appropriate for tendon remnants under 10 millimeters. Many advocate the use of a double row, but a double row increases your implant costs, it increases your surgical time, it may very well decrease the vascularity of the uh, remnant tendon, especially if you use wide uh, tapes and, and a lot of sutures, and it attempts you to excessive tension. Additionally, the failures are hard to treat. Dr. Cho has reported two different types of tendon repair failures, type one and type two. Type one tears tear from the footprint and they have a length of tendon remnant still preserved so that a, repair, a revision can be performed. The type two is near the musculotendinous junction with very little tendon still attached to the muscle. He found that in his studies, single row repairs were less likely to fail by a type two tear than double rows. In fact, 75% of single row repairs failed by type one, whereas 75% of double rows failed by type two. There was also an increased incidence of fatty atrophy with the double row repair. Dr. Snyder has taught us about the biology of the crimson duvet. This is created when microfracture, the greater tuberosity, creates a number of bleeding vents lateral to the attached tendon. This results in streaming bone marrow elements, which create a clot on the footprint. This clot then morphs into a neotendon over time. And by eight weeks, Dr. Snyder has shown us that this extends the repair over the greater tuberosity. He's reported numerous instances in which this has been seen to affect, to be occurring. And he's not alone. Dr. Joe in 2013 showed that marrow vents had a 75% healing rate, whereas uh, the control group only had a 54% healing rate. Milano and others have also 
duplicated this, showing the benefit of the crimson duvet lateral to the tendon edge to enhance healing. What about biology? Other biologic uh, stimuli include doxycycline. This has been shown to inhibit matrix metalloproteinases and it improved rotator cuff healing in repairs of rats in the rat model. It may also protect against C. acnes and as a result of its inhibitory effect and its protection against C. acnes, I've been giving my patients 100 milligrams of doxycycline BID for 14 days post-op. The single role repair starts off by careful evaluation of what you have, the pathology. Check on the mobility of the tendon. And clearly this tendon is not gonna extend all the way across the footprint. So after debriding the greater tuberosity with the shaver, I, am put, I insert the first of two anchors right adjacent to where the tendon falls. This is near the articular cartilage margin and it is situated so that there will not be very much tension placed on the tendon when the knots are tied. We wanna get a bite that's about a centimeter into the tendon and placed about five to 10 millimeters apart from the next suture. Using an anti-graded suture passer, we play, take the sutures from this biocomposite, a fully threaded anchor and pass it out the leading cannula for better suture management. Then moving more posteriorly, we insert a second biocomposite biodegradable suture anchor, again with three separate sutures, and we pass these again side by side until ultimately we passed all of the, all six of these sutures out through the leading uh, cannula out the front. These sutures, by the way, are made of PDS and ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, and the PDS represents 62% of the suture and biodegrades within two to three months, leaving behind the polyethylene suture to reinforce any remnant tendon stress. After we tie these knots, these are SMC knots, so they have an internal locking mechanism. We reinforce them with a series of three or four reversed half hitches, square knot uh, configuration to have a secure repair. So now that we've got all six of these knots tied and the suture back down to the bone, the tendon back down to the bone, we want to address the footprint. We use an awl to create vents into the marrow uh, through the footprint, and this allows bone marrow elements to come out. You'll see a couple of globules of fat. And then if we turn down the pump, we can see that blood begins to flow out through the uh, holes that we've created creating a clot, which then morphs into a neotendon and that matures to extend the tendon laterally. My single row repair is a low tension repair. I use biocomposite anchors placed near the articular cartilage margin. These anchors are fully threaded and triple loaded with simple stitches. They are secured with internal locking knots reinforced with reversed half hitches and then lateral to them, I place marrow vents to create a crimson duvet and extend the tendon during the healing process. In conclusion, while these sutures that we're using are super strong, they are not super secure. And it's really important to tie good knots. The anchors I use are fully threaded with multiple sutures and they are biocomposite and allow biodegradability. The cuff is a balanced repair to avoid high tension and a double row may not be desirable because the double row repair often will result in a type two failure if they do fail. Thank you for your attention.